The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone to today's program. I'm Molly Gamble with Becker's Healthcare. The program will begin with a presentation and we will have a question and answer session following completion of the presentation. You can submit any questions you have throughout the presentation by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled enter a question for staff and clicking send. Our presenters will attempt to answer as many questions as they can during the time we have and will follow up on questions they do not have the opportunity to address. You will receive an email within about a week following the webinar that will include instructions for how you can download a copy of the presentation. You will also receive a follow-up email shortly after completion of the program. You can submit your feedback or any additional questions at that time. This email will not include the presentation. It is now my pleasure to introduce today's presenters. Mark Mullen is currently the Vice President and General Manager of the OptiFreight Logistics Division of Cardinal Health. In this assignment since July 2012, Mark leads and manages this freight and logistics services business while exploring new channels and growth platforms. OptiFreight is one of the fastest growing businesses within the medical segment of Cardinal Health and is now the industry leader of freight management services to healthcare providers. Mark holds a, bit, a bachelor's degree in business administration from Pittsburgh State University in Pittsburgh, Kansas, where he graduated cum laude. Mike Walker is a system director at Presence Health in Chicago, Illinois. Previously, Mr. Walker was system director at Provena Health. Provena Health merged with Resurrection Health to form Presence Health in 2012. Mr. Walker now leads the purchasing staff for both health systems, utilizing two different platforms for materials management. As system director, he is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the purchasing department that orders for all 11 acute care facilities, 30 nursing homes, and 75 physician offices within Provena Medical Group, as well as Resurrection Medical Group. Mr. Walker has over 37 years of healthcare supply chain experience. It is now my pleasure to turn the floor over to Mark to begin today's presentation. All right, thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. My name is Mark Mullen, uh, and as the moderator said, I am the Vice President and General Manager of Opti Freight Logistics, a business of Cardinal Health. One of the questions I'm often asked is why are some healthcare providers more successful than others at lowering their freight costs? If they both have a free management program, how can there be such a big difference in savings? Well, that's a great question, and the good news is there is a simple answer. The providers who achieve the greatest savings are the ones who consistently follow the five steps we're going to go through today. If you do the same, you can be confident that whatever you're saving now, you're going to be saving even more in the future. But don't take my word for it. With me today is a healthcare supply chain professional who can tell you that it's true from first-hand experience. And if you take the five steps we're both going to share with you today, you're going to see the results where they matter most on your bottom line. I'd like to introduce you to Mike Walker, System Director of Centralized Purchasing for Presence Health, the largest Catholic health system based in Illinois. Presence Health is the result of two health systems coming together as one, Provena Health and Resurrection Health. Today, President's Health has more than 150 locations in all, including 11 hospitals, 27 long-term care and senior living facilities, dozens of physician offices and health centers, home care, hospice, behavioral health services, and more. In short, President's Health is the perfect picture of a fully integrated system that serves the entire continuum of care. And there's a lot of freight being shipped to and from all of those sites every day. Right, Mike? Literally hundreds of packages, Mark. And our audience can imagine what the number one challenge is. How do we get thousands of employees and suppliers to consistently pay attention to freight costs? But you mentioned the key a minute ago. When you said Provena and Resurrection came together as one, that we called the One Connection Project, a commitment to create a unified culture dedicated to improving patient care. That's why our freight management program is such a good fit with Presence Health. It's helping us save significant dollars that we're reallocating to improve in patient care. I look forward to telling our audience more about it as, and how we do it. Great. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so let's get started by revealing how to drive maximum value from a freight management program today. First, we'll share why close collaboration is absolutely essential to success. 
Even the best freight management program is only as strong as the investment each participant makes in constantly improving results. Next, we'll reveal the five ways to drive maximum savings. and These are the keys to creating more program value every day. And finally, we'll discuss how to identify a strong freight management program. The best programs include several essential ingredients, and we're going to tell you what they are today. Before we dig in any deeper, let's do a quick refresher on what exactly freight management is and how it lowers shipping costs. Freight management saves you money on the shipments that you already send and receive every day. And freight management does that in several ways. First, you get access or gain access to discounted rates from your carriers. Second, the more packages that you ship through your freight management program, the lower the rate and the more you save. Third, you gain greater visibility into what shipping is really costing you. When you can see your spend that deeply, you'll gain new insights that will help you be more efficient and save even more. But it takes more than just visibility alone to be successful. You have to take the next step, which leads us to one of the most common myths about freight management. That myth is that freight management programs can simply run on their own. But you can't just set it and forget it. To truly maximize the savings, you have to actively manage your program. In fact, the stronger your commitment to active management and collaboration, the greater your success will be. That, that means working closely not only with your freight management program, but also with your suppliers and with your GPO. And your freight management company should be at the heart of it all, keeping everyone in close communication. Because make, mo make, make no mistake, there's more to a strong freight management program than discounted rates alone. Low discounted rates are just the beginning of how you maximize your freight savings. The real key is program participation. You want to ship as many packages as possible through your freight management program. Because the more you utilize the program, the more you'll save overall. Also, you'll want your freight management company to handle as much of your overall freight spend as possible, including your inbound and outbound small parcel, as well as your large freight. Then you'll want the processes in place to actively manage and continuously improve your results. That's the way to the best value in freight management. Think of it this way. Why settle for low rates on just a few shipments when you can save on more shipments by managing more of them? So how much of a cost difference does active, manage and active management and program participation really make? Consider this real-world example. On the left, you'll see $39,678 of potential savings. When the hospital commits to minimal collaboration with its freight management uh, company, these are the results. But on the right, you'll see a savings, of, a savings increase of nearly 170%. So what's the difference? First, a complete commitment to shipping inbound, outbound, and large, large freight through the freight management program. Two, a willingness to share freight history so the freight management company can help maximize supplier compliance. And third, the discipline to include a PO comment on every purchase order to remind the supplier to use the right third-party account number. Now, which would you rather save, around $40,000 or almost $110,000? This is what's possible when you take full advantage of all the resources and expertise that the right freight management company has to offer. That's a great example, Mark. I couldn't agree more. In fact, I'd like to show everyone a slide of my own. When we say we believe in the power of active management and program participation at President's Health, you can take it to the bank, and we do. By combining inbound and outbound parcels with large freight, we saved well over 700000 compared to the carrier list price in a single year alone at Presence Health. So how do we do it? By taking advantage of the keys that Mark just mentioned. One, gaining full visibility into our freight spend. Two, actively managing our program. And three, creating a complete freight management strategy. Let's take a closer look at each. One, full visibility. It's invaluable at Presence Health. Imagine if you had to manually track the freight charges 
of 11 hospitals and nearly 150 other facilities. I don't have to because my freight management dashboard does it automatically for me. I can see all my freight activity online, all in one place, whenever I want. That's the power of the data analytics. Two, active management. You can't just push a button and programming succeeds by itself. You have to closely collaborate with your freight management program, suppliers, and your GPO. Use the tools your program provides, such as the freight management dashboard, and supplement them with your own efforts. And third, complete strategy. If you want to save the most, you have to look at inbound, outbound, and large freight together. As a complete strategy, it couldn't be more effective. And great comments, Mike. Okay, so how can our listeners achieve great results as well? Here are the five ways to maximize savings that we mentioned a minute ago. Number one, supplier participation. What can you do to drive greater program compliance? Two, employee participation. What's the most effective way to remind employees to use the program every time they shift? Third, mode optimization. How can both suppliers and employees easily identify the most cost-effective way to ship every time? Four, large freight. How can your freight management program save you enough save you money when you're shipping items that weigh over 150 pounds? And five, advanced analytics. How can advanced technology help you improve efficiency and identify more opportunities to save? Let's take a closer look at each of these five. Number one, maximizing supplier participation. What can you do to help ensure suppliers are taking advantage of every opportunity to save? Use these pro proven strategies to drive greater program compliance. First, provide your freight history to your freight management program. One of the best ways to maximize your savings is to reveal which suppliers are participating and which ones aren't. When you provide a freight history file on a regular basis, your freight management company can see which suppliers are not using the third-party account. And you can learn why they're not using it and when they're charging you any unnecessary fees. And you can determine which suppliers you're using that aren't certified on our program yet. It only takes your staff a few hours, one time only, to set up these reports. Your return on that time investment will be substantial. The second strategy is to include a PO comment on every purchase order every time. How do you help ensure suppliers use the third-party account number for every shipment? Remind them on every purchase order you issue. When you include these shipping instructions as a PO comment, you'll drive 25% more packages through your program, and that means 25% more opportunities to save. The third strategy is to communicate with your suppliers. The freight management program should already have a strong supplier relations team working on your behalf to constantly onboard new suppliers, as well as monitor and increase compliance. Providers should stay in constant communication with suppliers as well, starting from the first day of implementation. When you collaborate closely with suppliers, you'll see every shipment as an opportunity to save. Your freight management company can start the conversation, but everyone needs to come together to save the most money possible. So Mike, what do you do at President's Health to increase your supplier participation? Well, first, let me share the value of doing what we do at President's Health. We save an average of 47% on every inbound package. That saves us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I don't know what a 47% savings would mean to your health system, but it's pretty easy to do the math. And after you do, you'll want to follow the steps we take to maximize su supplier participation. First, don't be afraid to share your freight history data with your freight management program. They have analytical capabilities that you likely don't have and can spot ways to save that you can never find on your own, even if you had the time to look. Second, we happen to review every invoice that has freight charges over $50 to see if the supplier is in compliance with our program. If not, we give that vendor a general reminder, ASAP. Third, use all your resources to apply those general reminders. Your freight management program can leverage its relationships with your suppliers to help maintain and improve compliance. At contract renewal time, your G GPO could be invaluable, ensuring your suppliers are on board with saving you all the freight costs they can. 
Great. Thanks, Mike. All right, now let's move on to the second of our five ways to maximize program savings, improving employee participation. Here are a couple proven ways to do it. First, promote education. What is the most effective way to remind your employees to use their freight management program every time they ship? It all comes down to communicating the value when they do. Ongoing education is key so they always remember to use the freight management tools available to them to save on every shipment. Second, use an online portal. The freight management program should provide you with a shipping tool that is easy for your employees to use and also enables them to gain visibility into how their shipping decisions drive savings for your institution. I can tell you from experience that employee education works. We save an average of 42% on every outbound package. Again, you could do the math to see how the savings will add up for you. Like with our inbound shipping, we follow a few simple steps to maximize savings. First, I look at every single outbound freight bill before it gets paid. I can see them all right on my freight management program dashboard. Secondly, when an employee fails to use our freight management program, I send one of those general reminders of the importance of using our program to save money. Third, we use our program to support culture change. It's no news that all of us in healthcare are tasked like never before to save money without sacrificing the quality of patient care. When Provena Health and Resurrection Health came together as Presence Health, we dedicated ourselves to work as one to improve patient care. Part of that effort is cutting waste everywhere we can. By teaming up with our freight management program, we're able to drive significant new savings that can now invest elsewhere to improve patient care. To educate our employees on, on how our freight management program saves our system a lot of money, we use a variety of communication materials, such as a video and a letter over our president's signature. The response speaks for itself in all the money we save every day. Excellent. All right, folks, let's move on to number three on our list of ways to maximize savings. It's the best and easiest way for suppliers and employees to save you even more than simply participating in your freight management program alone. This is called mode optimization, and it identifies how to ship each package at the lowest rate possible without impacting your delivery date. For example, why choose an overnight service if a lower cost ground service will get your package there the next day as well? Here's how mode optimization works. For suppliers, your freight management program will provide the suppliers with the right tools to help them identify the lowest cost way to ship. And your program can also provide you with analytical online tools to track when suppliers are using mode optimization and when they're not. Your freight management program and you can then work with suppliers to remind them to use this money-saving strategy. For your employees, your freight management program can give you an online tool that employees can use to automatically identify the lowest cost way to ship. Now let's talk about the key that makes mode optimization work. I could describe it, but as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Transit maps are a hidden strategy for unlocking thousands of dollars in freight savings. Your carriers have transit maps which can assist you in understanding the most cost-effective mode to ship based on the proximity to your suppliers. In this example, you would be based in Columbus, Ohio. If your supplier is in the red circle, your supplier can ship using ground service and the package will arrive the next day. So if that supplier is using overnight instead of ground, you're paying too much for next day freight. You'd want to talk with that supplier about shipping and using a more cost-effective mode. Mark, I can't stress how valuable mode optimization is to maximize your savings. Let's take an outbound shipping example and say you have a choice of sending a patient's follow-up letter overnight for $18 or $6 via ground shipping. A $13 upcharge doesn't sound like all that much of the big scheme of things. It's really important that the records arrive on time, so you opt for overnight. But imagine if dozens or even hundreds of people thought that way every day. Suddenly you're paying an extra $13 not on one package, but on hundreds or even thousands. The extra cost inflates to a really big number, and you pay it day after day. Instead, what if you had an easy-to-use tool that would ensure the package arrived at the same time at a lower cost? 
In other words, premium service at a value price. That's the power of mode optimization. Yep, that's great. All right, so now let's turn to the fourth strategy, and that's remembering your large phrase. It's surprising that something this big is often overlooked, but it is. In fact, as many as half of the materials manager's orders can be large freight shipments. So what are we talking about when we say large freight? Clinical equipment, bulk orders of consumable goods, IT equipment, and so on. If it's a combined shipment of over 150 pounds, it's a bulk, if it's bulky, oversized, or if it needs a pallet, it's considered large freight. And the savings can be substantial. Mike will tell you that President's Health has saved nearly $32,000 in the last 12 months alone, or a 35% savings. You can maximize your savings by focusing on these key strategies. First, save on capital improvements. When you're involved with new construction, the freight charges for all the capital equipment and other large purchases you need to make really add up. To minimize these, follow these steps. Number one, involve your freight management program and account manager early in the pre-construction phase so that you can plan ahead for maximum freight savings. Call your supplier before you place a purchase order, confirm what the shipping cost is and what's included in it. And most importantly, confirm that your supplier is coordinating the shipment through your freight management program. The next strategy is to save on new equipment. The same rule applies, call before you ship. Contact your freight management program directly to select the best carrier and services to meet the needs of each shipment. The call will only take two to three minutes. It's the best way to ensure your goods arrive safely, on time, and at the best cost. And there are more, way, more keys to savings as well. When you ship inbound, make sure you have large freight instructions on your PO. For outbound shipping, contact your freight management program for the right large freight carrier. And always remember, it's as easy to save on large freight as it is on small parcel. If you need proof that it's worthwhile to remember your large freight, just remember this, 35% savings. As Mark just said, that's the average amount we save on every large freight shipment at President's Hall. And we do it by following a few simple steps. First, we can focus on driving as much large freight volume as possible through our program just as we do with our inbound and outbound small parcels. But here, we're not saving a few dollars of shipping as we do with small parcels. We're saving a few hundred dollars or even more every time we ship. Secondly, we focus on all the capital equipment we buy throughout our health system. Remember, we have 11 hospitals and over 150 sites in all. That's a lot of equipment to ship. So we leave it to the experts and let our freight management program do all the legwork. Their program determines the best carriers and shipping services to get everything where it needs to be on time and cost effectively. Third, to maximize your freight savings, your program can't do it all alone. For large freight, you need to call the suppliers and make sure they're using the right account number when they ship. And you need to call your freight management program for routing instructions. Like Mark said, the call only takes a couple of minutes. It's well worth your time. Just remember, I'm saving an average of 35% every time I make that call. All right, great. Our fifth and final way to maximize savings is advanced analytics. You can't manage your freight unless you have full visibility into what you're spending. Giving you that level of transparency is what advanced analytics is all about. Your freight management program can analyze your freight history to uncover trends around such key cost metrics like shipping cost per pack, tax per patient bed, shipping mode mix, and many more. You can also benchmark your performance among your peers and discover new best practices. With these insights, you can spot areas to improve and new opportunities to save. And then there's the next level of data analysis. We call it predictive analytics. It takes the power of big data to an entirely new level aggregating your freight data with that of other providers, plus adding, adding general market data and trends so you can identify potential incremental savings that may be hidden. Mark, this is a level of data analysis that a provider can never do on its own. Regardless of how strong your IT department is, you simply wouldn't have access to the depth of supplier and market data that a freight management program could provide. You'll see the difference in how much you save day after day. All right, 
So those are the five ways you can maximize savings via your freight management program. To recap quickly, one, maximize your supplier participation. Two, improve and focus on employee participation. Three, increase mode optimization. Four, remember your large freight. And five, take advantage of the advanced analytics. So how do you know you have the right freight management program to deliver on all five of these areas? How do you evaluate the program's strength if you're not familiar with it? And what should you be looking for? Well, there are several advantages that every freight management program must have. If you want to maximize savings, you need them all. Whether you're evaluating your current program or shopping for one for the very first time, Mike's going to share what to look for based on his experience. Thanks, Mark. The first must-have is a program scale and reach. You need full visibility and control your freight spent across your entire health system, plus the expertise to identify and take advantage of every savings opportunity. The freight management program should have the resources and expertise to offer the most efficient and cost-effective shipping option across every site of care. I've said this before, but we have over 150 sites of President's Health. You can imagine the complexity when they all came together as one health system. For example, I inherited no fewer than 80 Federal Express separate shipping accounts for outbound shipping. I needed to boil them down all to one, and that's exactly what my freight management program did for me. Simplify operations so I could gain control, spend smarter, and save money. The second must-have is advanced data and analytics. You just heard Mark talk about the power of big data in healthcare, and your freight management program should be fully embracing it. Data analytics can spot savings opportunities that you don't have the time or resources to find on your own. And again, don't be afraid to share your data with the freight management program. They have the analytical tools and expertise to turn raw data into hard savings for your organization. Let them do the light work. The third must have, I believe it's healthcare industry expertise. I don't have to tell you that healthcare is not a traditional business. We have our own unique challenges. After all, what we do literally impacts the health and lives of the people in our community. So your freight management program needs to have the proper resources and understand that the shipments you receive and send are critical to patient care. There's little room for error or for a freight management program that treats healthcare like a part-time job. As you know so well, this is a full-time commitment. My freight management program is laser focused on reducing costs in the healthcare industry. When it comes to healthcare freight, it takes a true expert to know how to reduce costs without compromising quality, safety, or delivery timing. In my years of experience, first with Provena Health and now with President's Health, OptiFree Logistics has shown strong in all three must-haves. Well, thanks, Mike. At Optic Freight Logistics, we are helping thousands of healthcare providers just like you to save on direct shipping costs. And as you said, we do it by delivering on all of the must-haves. Let's take a quick look. The first must-have is program scale and reach. At Optic Freight Logistics, we serve today 21,000 active healthcare facilities across the country every day. That's more than 2,000 individual healthcare providers. And together, they saved over $200 million in 2014 alone. How? By using Optifrate Logistics to identify the most cost-efficient way to ship 11.5 million packages. As you can see, we're working with our customers to make a real cost difference. How do we do it? Optifrate Logistics delivers stronger results than any other freight management program in three ways. Number one, a comprehensive program for all your complex needs across the continuum of care. For visibility and control, you need to better spot opportunities to save. And then we'll give you the tools to take full advantage of them. And third, access to expertise and proactive support that works to extend your advantage in healthcare today. At OptiFreight Logistics, our comprehensive program is built to be a solution for all your complex needs. For example, we provide integrated solutions across the care continuum, from small parcel to large freight, whether inbound or outbound. Next, we enhance our scale and reach with our strategic relationships 
with thousands of suppliers, more than 25 carriers, and all major healthcare GPOs. And we increased value even more with key best practices that increased program use by up to 30%. Freight spend analysis, education, purchase order instructions all make the difference in improving supplier participation. The next must-have is advanced data and analytics. Optifreight Logistics leverages both to give you more visibility and control. So how do we do it? For starters, proprietary data analytics provide greater visibility into your shipping costs so you can see true total spend, including hidden shipping costs. Using our customized program reporting online, you'll discover shipping service trends that your organization and suppliers can use to influence improve shipping practices. Because of our program scale, you'll also be able to benchmark your performance against your peers and identify cost reduction opportunities. Plus, our advanced outbound shipping tool gives you unprecedented real-time control over shipping modes and add-on costs. In fact, our customers can save an average of 17% on every outbound package just by using the shipping tool. And finally, our predictive analytics are on the cutting edge of data modeling and can reveal even more incremental savings opportunities. And our final must-have is healthcare industry expertise. At Optifrey Logistics, healthcare is what we do. It's all that we do. Our solution includes healthcare-focused freight management, expertise, and proactive support to help drive your success. Our vendor relations experts proactively enroll suppliers and drive continued participation to increase your inbound program volume. To help foster employee participation with your outbound program, we provide continual education and outreach programs. For large freight, our logistics team selects the right carrier to ensure you receive the best service at the best price. Our service also includes auditing carrier charges prior to invoicing to ensure accuracy. It's all supported by a dedicated team of over 200 freight management experts who manage cost-saving initiatives and drive program usage among manufacturers and suppliers. Mark, I'd just like to add just one final thought. The five steps that we've been discussing today are essential to maximizing savings. After Freight Logistics, our first guide to implementing those five steps. If you joined us today to find a proven way to save more, I think you found it with Optifree Logistics. All right, everyone. On behalf of Mike Walker, President Health, and Optifree Logistics, I'd like to thank you for listening to, listening to us today. And now we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Mark and Mike, for a very informative and enjoyable presentation. We will now begin the Q&A portion of the program. So as a reminder, you can submit any questions you have by typing them into your control panel on the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. Mark and Mike will attempt to answer as many questions as they can during the time we have and will follow up on questions they do not have the opportunity to address. So Mark and Mike, there are a few questions here ready. Um, the first one here is how do you encourage your employees to use OptiFreight? Well, let me try and answer that first. Um, we do this via email blast. We've done a video explaining OptiFreight, and it was posted on our weekly presence news website. This goes out to all of our employees, so they get a link to that site. We're also not afraid to give our employees desk desktop access to create their own shipments for their own desk. We don't necessarily always direct them to the receiving dock to do that. Um, this gives them the opportunity to see and choose the best method um, to ship their package. And I, I believe we've added over about 125 users over the last year alone. Okay, great. Let's see, the second question, were you concerned with sharing your internal data with Optifreight given that they are owned by Cardinal Health? No, this didn't really concern me. I knew Cardinal Health and Cardinal Optifreight operate, operated as independent entities. And really, in order to get the data uh, you need, it's necessary to share your freight history. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, Mike, too. And, and uh, you know, as I visit with customers, I often get asked on the Opti freight side, if, you know, if I'm providing my freight history, how is that data used and, and is it protected? And, and I can assure you, from an Opti freight logistics perspective, we first and foremost recognize 
the, the, the importance of that data and the importance of keeping that data confidential. So uh, none of that data is shared. We are a Cardinal Health business, but Occupate Logistics is operated separately. We have internal firewalls to keep any of the data being shared, and it's all managed and uh, utilized and then reported back to our customers exclusively. So, uh, it, you know, we, may, we protect that uh, uh, very well, and we're committed to that. Okay, and the third question here, who is responsible for communicating with suppliers? Would that all fall on me or, or would Optifreight do it for me? You know, I think this has to be a collaborative effort. For the vendors that are certified with Optifreight, I think they've already done most of the legwork for you. For the non-certified, we did create a vendor letter. We don't hesitate to send it to the vendors. Um, we don't hesitate to share it with Optifreight, having our uh, letterhead on it and let them share it with the vendors that they're trying to work with and get into the freight management program. Um, I work together with my account manager on this all the time. Yeah, and I, what I would add to that, this is Mark, is that, I mean, we've got a team of, of 20 people there based in Dublin that wake up every day, uh, come into work to make contact with our suppliers, work with our suppliers, and work to certify suppliers and drive program compliance. As Mike mentioned, we do have north of 900 suppliers that are certified on our program. So those suppliers, are, uh, you know, collaborate with us, work very closely to make sure our customers utilize uh, their third-party freight management program. Um, so it's a very effective way. And those non-certified, uh, I couldn't agree with Mike more. Our supplier relations people work with them on a daily basis, but we collaborate and work with our provider customers to drive that compliance. So it's a real team effort. Okay, and just a reminder to those listening in still, you can submit questions in the control panel. There's a space labeled enter a question for staff and hitting send. Uh, even if Mark and Mike do run out of time, they will still be following up on questions from attendees that we don't have the opportunity to address. The next question here is, how much time would I need to spend reviewing reports? Well, let me take a stab at that one. Um, that's the beauty of the program. Um, right now, President's Health is in the midst of um, implementing a new ERP system. So I got to be real honest, I haven't had the time to dedicate a lot to it lately, but I still try to take the time weekly to go and review party analytics called program health. I think it's a really cool part of the dashboards and analytics that are in there. I can quickly see where my participation level, service mix, and add on cost percentages are. I could do some very quick breakdowns within that part of the analytics, such as who's not using the online program, who my top vendors that are not using Optifreight are. And a really nice part of the program help is that if I have users that are abusing certain types of shipments, such as overnight or first priority overnight, I can actually turn that service off for them and they won't be able to ship that way in the future. Um, there, there's various other easy benchmarking um, things in the program analytics that I don't have to spend a lot of time every week reviewing it. No, the only thing I would add there is, as we, you know, uh, I would say Mike and his program are far down the road, very, very actively managed program, and as you can see, generate very significant savings. We have newer customers or newer to OptiFreight. In that regard, sometimes they'll spend more time on their reports, and we'll come back with more uh, visibility and views of the data, getting around cost per pack or mode optimization or their mode mix and things like that that Mike's accustomed to seeing. He's been managing it for a number of years. For our newer customers, some of this is new, and our account managers are fantastic resources to step them through those reports, and, and we help dig in more to the, the data to provide that visibility to help you drive more savings. So kind of up to the user and how much ownership they want to take. Okay, wonderful. And then how long does it take to implement a freight management program from the start to the time you realize full savings? Okay, I'll start with that one, Mike. Um, that's, a great, that's a great question because you've got, you know, between uh, when, when a customer decides to come on and, and I can only speak for this, in this regard, I can only speak to OptiFreight as opposed to uh, a universal freight management. On the OptiFreight side, uh, recognizing that a quick implementation and ramp-up is very important to our customers. 
It is one of our metrics that we focus on as part of our lean initiative to be able to be as efficient as possible. And uh, dependent on, you know, how quickly the customer is able to start implementing and using a PO comment and how quickly we're able to get the freight history. But when we have the data we need, we're generally able to have customers ramp up and start seeing savings within our We've, we've reduced it, it was, uh, to around 21 days um, at this point is our standard, and we continue to improve that. And that's, uh, again, a collaborative effort between us and our customers. So it's short. Yeah, and I, I don't know how much more I can expand upon that, but I think, uh, again, what Mark said, you know, getting the freight history files out is, I think for us, was key to really jump-starting the program and getting the data out there. So. Um, OptiFreight Logistics for us could um, take that data and put it into some analytics for us, see what providers, you know, and suppliers um, that we could easily move over into the program. And I think, you know, for us, we saw very quick results. Wonderful. So we have a couple more questions rolling in here. Let's see. What is more effective, implementing OptiFreight on a system-wide, top-down basis, or facility-by-facility, facility, local basis? Hmm. Um, I'll start. Mike, you can think about that. I'll start from our side. Um, with, with, uh, I mean, OptiFreight is a, a very holistic program approach, and we, we have uh, the way we structure our team is to, when a customer comes on, they are assigned an account manager that owns the. The, and takes a holistic view of the, of the customer. Uh, we believe because of the, the significant consolidation that continues in the market, and Mike's a great example. The system's very large, and for Mike to optimize his savings, it, we believe that it, it, it makes a ton, of, a ton of sense to look at the system holistically, look at how, because there's so many doors and so many inbound shipments, um, so that high-level collaboration is invaluable, and, you know, that. In general, that's our approach that we take. Now, with that said, I will tell you, um, you know, oftentimes you've got a, a single institution or a number of institutions within a large system um, that recognize a significant savings opportunity. And we have uh, had much success implementing a single facility as a, you know, that will come on, will demonstrate the savings, and then generally what we find is then the whole system eventually rolls out and it, it takes a champion or an internal expert or supply chain expert internally to really uh, champion it in a large system and, and to optimize the savings. I don't know, Mike, if you have anything to add. I'll, I'll jump on that a little bit. Um, I, would, I would really, I would prefer to from top down, mm -hmm. from that perspective. Um, for me, I think if you have the buy-in from your upper management um, that this is definitely a program and definitely uh, an area where you can see that you can get some incremental savings out of, I think that's the best way to go at it. Get them to communicate it to the employees, get them to, to assist with the account managers to get the communication out to the suppliers. Um, if you feel that you've got one of your facilities is much more stronger in, in you know, the freight management overall, Start with that one and, and then show the proven results to the upper management. And, and for us, I think it was easy by it just for them to see that and then help us with the communication from it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's a question from a, a current customer. So as a current OptiFreight customer, how do we access the advanced analytics portion of the service? Okay. Well, great question. Um, and we continue, I, I will tell you, as we've become more of a, you know, OptiFreight's been in business for about 12 years, and I, I believe we are, um, and many thanks to our customers, we're learning how to do this service better and better. Um, and one of the things we've really gained an appreciation of is the value of, you know, it's one to provide visibility to your customer. Um, we're trying to really advance that effort and create analytical techniques that will unlock savings that that you know on the surface may not may not be as uh, obvious. Uh, one of those is so so on the advanced side we continue to and because of our we have relationships with a large large portion of the U.S. hospital base. Therefore, our database and our access to data is very large. We're able to then take that data, connect it with suppliers, 
and we can build modeling that you know that demonstrates and oftentimes points out we've got we may have customers that uh, they have suppliers that just for some reason or not are not on the freight history we don't see the data they're not aware of it um, and we're able to then inquire sit down with that customer and say you know most hospitals your size doing this kind of volume or this kind of bed size you know, has this mix of suppliers, and uh, and we're able to uncover savings, turn those on. Um, your account managers can work. If you're a current customer, you've got an account manager that's working on your behalf. I would ask them to connect with our supplier relations team um, and and go deeper on the analytics. Your account manager can sit down and talk about the data, what how we can go deeper and uh, and bring more visibility. Okay, let's see. Another question here, is there training available for current customers of OptiFreight? If so, how could I sign up for that? Yeah, there absolutely is. We're very, in, uh, we love doing training and because uh, we, we see a direct correlation between as we train, actually, and it was, you heard about it loud and clear on this webinar, we believe in training and equipping employees to make those right decisions. And so uh, through your account manager, we can access training. Uh, they can facilitate uh, uh, tool training, uh, program knowledge and education for, for your staff, and, uh, and we can provide that, uh, provide that to our customers, no problem. And I'll just add to that. Um, work with your account manager. That's what I've done. Yeah. I do not hesitate to call my account manager um, and say, hey, I need you to come in and do a training session with a whole group of employees. Absolutely. I'll give you a perfect example. We, you know, we have an, we have a, our corporate offices in actually in downtown Chicago, and I actually got a call from our senior level executive assistant to say we need you somebody to come down here and do training yep. for all of our, big, you know, assistants that are in that office. And you know, my account manager didn't hesitate to say, when do you need me? So work with them, you know, and I think. It, it also becomes a train the trainer, you know, methodology for me is as I get more of our managers at our sites bought into the program, yeah. they're not hesitate to do that training at their own sites also. Absolutely. And part of that, that training can be educating employees about freight management and how they use it and the awareness of the value that it delivers all the way to just portal usage. We talked about, Mike talked about the outbound shipping portal and using that tool, because the, the other side of training is as we train people, then as leaders, as Mike does a great job of, he holds his people accountable to execute on the program. So that training enables that. Okay, thank you both. It looks like this is the last question for this set. So would we need to submit our freight history to you or do you extrapolate that information from our invoices? Hmm. Um, for us, with our current ERP systems that we have, um, we did work with our IT team to develop either a report that we were able to customize, or in a lot of cases, you may have a standard report on your system right. um, that you can extrapolate that data out. Once you figure out from a reporting perspective how you can get out of your system, it's simply uploading it to a, a FTP site for for OptiFreight and, and they grab that file every month. And yeah. my IT team works very closely with OptiFreight's IT team um, to get that data to them. Yeah, that, and that's the optimal way. We we do have customers that provide a file that just may be invoice data, but setting it up to optimize your savings, the, the best route is to create a regular freight history file that can be extracted and then pulled in. Then we can work on your suppliers and amping up the amping up the savings. I've had situations though where I wasn't able to get that file. Yep. yep. I don't hesitate to send them paper files and say, "Here you go, work on it." And yep. I've never had an issue where, um, in the the years of experience that I've worked with Optifreight, where they weren't able to get the data and, and extrapolate it and put it together and, and be able to get me data back out. Yeah. And that's the upside of working with. I can only again speaking for Optifreight, but the upside of working with Optifreight who has has many customers, we're able to look at the data and we can build and, and build some predictive models that we believe we, you know, most hospitals are buying from these suppliers and then work very hard to turn those on. So, 
uh, we'll do that on your behalf. Okay. Well, Mark and Mike, thank you so much for your excellent presentation and for all the attendees who listened in and submitted questions. We look forward to having you join us for future webinars. This concludes today's program. We hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much.